Thank you. So my title, and I gave an abstract, are a bit technical, but I would like to talk the talk to be simpler, and it'll probably be vague. So the topic lies somewhere in between algebraic geometry, um, homotopy theory, symplectic geometry, deformation quantization. And I'm interested in all of these things, and I'm eager to talk to anyone else who's interested in these things. So let me give some motivation. So I'd like to understand moduli spaces sorry I'll call them M of so vector bundles so vector bundles on some variety might vary with um, continuous parameters and I'm going to consider these on so-called Calabi-Yau varieties. So if you want concrete examples to keep in mind, if you look at a smooth uh, cubic curve in the complex projective plane, so this will be an elliptic curve, there will be a one-dimensional example of such a thing. You could look at smooth cortex in P3 or smooth quintix in P4 and so on. These will all be examples of calabi varieties. And the intuitive way to think of these is they're sort of like algebraic or holomorphic analogs of compact oriented manifolds. So I'd like to understand moduli spaces of vector bundles on these things. Um, as I said, they're analogs of compact oriented manifolds, so you could also look at moduli spaces of local systems or maybe complexes with locally constant cohomology. So these are the same as, say, bundles with flat connection on compact oriented real manifolds. It will turn out that the moduli spaces of these two things have very similar properties and we can prove uniform theorems about them. So this is the motiva motivation, and if you're in dimension less than or equal to two, then these things are very nice. Yeah, that's right. So um, here, this will be, if we're doing it over C, this will be complex dimension D, um, and this will be real for the manifold, and this will be complex. But uh, in terms of the moduli spaces that are associated to them, these are the right dimensions to look at. So I could look at a real surface or a complex surface, and I'll get moduli spaces with the same structures. So if dimension is less than or equal to two, these things are very nice, at least if you impose some hypotheses. And um, if dimension is equal to two, uh, they carry, M carries a natural symplectic form. So this will be an algebraic or holomorphic symplectic form. Um, and this is built using uh, either Poincaré or Serre duality. And there's a problem in higher dimensions. So if the dimension is greater than or equal to three, then this moduli space is in general very singular. And uh, of the wrong dimension. So whatever you expect the dimension to be, it's not going to be that. So it'll have different components where the dimension jumps around and it's a big mess. And um, you still have, of course, Poincaré and Serre duality on the original thing you started with, but that's not going to help here. Um, so Poincaré and Serre duality
uh, don't give you anything, don't give you any extra structure on this moduli space. And the reason for this is that this space M doesn't know anything about higher cohomology. of your vector bundle or of your flat connection. And so it's going to pair things in some dimension where the moduli space knows something with something where the moduli space doesn't and so you can't do anything with it. And there's a solution to this problem And um, what I want to say is due to uh, Pontev, Cohen, Vakier. I forgot to look up if it's just a Q or there's some other letter in there. So I apologize to him in his absence. Um, so the solution here is to promote this moduli space M to an object in derived algebraic geometry. And I'll give an example in a minute to say what that means. And what this achieves um, is that this promoted M, so now M remembers higher cohomology, so I'm built in to the tangent structure of this space. And Poincaré and Sir duality um, allow you to define a symplectic form, except now this symplectic form is going to have some degree. So your tangent information is going to live in many degrees. You're actually going to have, instead of a tangent bundle, a tangent complex. And your symplectic form is going to allow you to shift this complex back and forth. So you're going to get a symplectic form of degree um, 2 minus whatever the dimension of your original space was. So if, the dimension, if it's a surface, you're going to have 2 minus 2 is 0. You have a usual symplectic form. Otherwise, you have something a bit more exotic. And if you're familiar with supermanifolds or Q-manifolds, you also have symplectic forms there that appear with, say, odd degree. And this is an analog of that. No. Um, it, so I could have, for instance, for if I am in dimension 4, this will have degree minus 2. So I'm, I actually have a grading, not just a super grading. So... Uh, and there's a sense in which M is somehow virtually smooth and virtually of the correct dimension. So I should give you an example. Uh, I should say a little bit about what derived algebraic geometry is and give an example. Okay, so in classical algebraic geometry, um, your functions form a commutative algebra. So a classical scheme or variety locally looks like spec A, A is a commutative algebra. So you just think I have a polynomial ring, modulo finitely many polynomials, and Locally, these are functions on my variety, which I can embed into affine space. A derived scheme um, locally looks like this now, where A is a commutative differential graded algebra. So my generators can appear in various degrees, and I have a differential on them. I, I'm doing that for simplicity. So if you want to do positive characteristic, you should use simplicial commutative algebras uh, or maybe E infinity algebras. So let me give an example here. So 
the most basic example of such a thing that's interesting is um, I take some variables of degree 0, some variables of degree minus 1. These are going to generate. So as an algebra, A is going to be free on these. So as in uh, Mira's talk, these are going to be Grassmann variables. They're going to anticommute. But these ones are going to commute. And then I have polynomials in these. I'm going to add a differential eventually. But first, uh, let me give you an example of what a symplectic form of non-zero degree might look like. So because I have the same number of variables, they're somehow paired with each other. And I just write down a very naive generalization of the usual Darboux symplectic form. Okay, so whatever that means, it ought to be non-degenerate because it's a delta ij kind of thing. And uh, it's closed just because, well, if I take d of that, there's d in front of everything already. And you can make, give an intrinsic meaning to this thing. So this is a symplectic form of degree minus 1. You can imagine doing this of degree minus 2, where I had some variables x, y, and z of degree 0, minus 1, and minus 2, and so on. And let me just tell you what the differential is. Um, so pick just a function, a polynomial, something in degree 0. Um, I have a Poisson bracket that's the inverse of this, essentially. And I define a differential by bracketing with h. And you can check that if I, I really just need to know what it does to these generators. It's going to send these to 0 because there's nothing in positive degrees. So you can check. Um, that this will be partial derivative of your function with respect to xi. Okay. So in particular, if you look at the degree 0 cohomology with respect to this differential, you're going to have degree 0 functions modulo those coming in from degree minus 1. So you have functions modulo partial derivatives of h. Those are functions on the critical locus of h. Okay. In general, that thing is going to be singular and not of the right dimension. But remembering higher cohomology of this algebra somehow corrects that and allows you to have some kind of symplectic structure. So let me state a theorem. So you can do higher dimensional analogs of this with symplectic forms of degree minus 2 and so on. These will be described by kind of Hamiltonian functions h of more negative degree. So the theorem is the following. Is that an example of a symplectic derived scheme? Yeah, uh, well, of a symplectic derived scheme. So a derived scheme, so spec of A is a symplectic derived scheme uh, where the symplectic form has degree minus 1. And a symplectic derived stack will be locally built as sort of smooth quotients of such a thing. So the, the theorem, this is sort of from two papers with subsets of the following authors. So uh, Oren Ben Bassat, myself, um, Victoria Busi, and Dominic Joyce. It's that um, uh, a symplectic derived stack so this could be, for instance, one of these moduli spaces of vector bundles or local systems on something oriented with symplectic form of negative degree um, is locally described by um, the graded Darboo coordinates. Let me call this degree k less than 0. 
created our blue coordinates. And some Hamiltonian. H of degree k plus 1. Okay, so in particular when k equals minus 1, I'm in this situation. And a particular case of this says, this is the last thing I want to say, um, in particular the moduli stack of vector bundles on a Clavier threefold make a precise statement. It emits an atlas, so it's covered by um, critical loci. Of functions, algebraic functions on finite dimensional smooth varieties. Okay. And there was this was known somehow in an infinite dimensional setting in terms of gauge theory, and now at least locally you can do it in a completely finite dimensional way. So I'll stop there. <laughs>